This time on Arkansas Wildlife, we're smallmouth bass fishing on Crooked Creek with fisheries biologist Paul Port from the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. And Paul's going to tell us all about a tagging study to help us learn more about Crooked Creek smallmouth. We are looking at how much harvest is going on, especially with the smallmouth during this project. In 2017, we dedicated the Mark Oliver Georges Creek access from the snow axis down to Kelly Slab is now split into two sections. That opened up a lot more opportunities for floating and we had some concerns that it increased the fishing pressure on the creek and people were keeping too many fish. So we wanted to put some numbers to the concerns and uh, see what people were actually keeping and how many people are out here fishing and what they were fishing for. Four, four, nine. We started a exploitation study where we go out and tag smallmouth bass that are over 14 inches, the ones that are legal to keep. And we're also doing, in conjunction with that, a creel survey where we're sitting at the accesses on the creek and interviewing anglers that are either fishing at the access or coming off the creek to see what people are fishing for, what they're using, where they're coming from, how much money people are spending to come fish here. So getting a lot of information on the creek this year to, to uh, address some of the concerns that uh, we've been hearing. To tag the smallmouth bass, we took our electric fishing boat out and we shocked from the Pyatt access down to the Yellowville access two times. So we hit the Cole Creek in that section twice and we collected all the 14 inch uh, smallmouth bass or larger and put tags in them. During the month of June this year, we shocked this section of creek twice and we were able to tag 195 smallmouth bass. We tagged fish with different colored tags, anywhere from $10 to $100. And the ones that are worth $100 will actually say $100 on it. We uh, want people to know that value and so it'll be more app for people to turn those tags in. So we can assume that a $100 tag is gonna have 100% return. So people want that $100. So they're gonna actually call in and give us the information. And when somebody catches a colored tag, we uh, require the tag to be clipped off and returned to us so people can't um, just take a picture and spread it around to their friends and say, oh, we all caught this $100 fish, you know, at different times. And they call the number on the tag. It'll have a, a phone number to me and a tag number and when they call, I'll ask them for their tag number, what time of day they caught it, so we can see if people are day fishing or night fishing. Uh, we'll ask them what they were using to catch the fish, whether it be soft plastics, crankbaits, live baits, so we can get an estimate of what people are using out here. And we can also estimate catch and release mortality based on the lures that they're using. We ask them where they caught the fish, and surprisingly, people have been very specific. We mark where we tag that fish, and then when an angler calls it in and they tell us where they caught it, we can get an estimate of movement. We've had a couple do some pretty big movements. One moved 9.3 miles upstream from uh, below Kelly Slab all the way up to in between Snow and George's Creek. But on average, the fish are staying where we tagged them. We've had several reported like 40 days after we tagged them and haven't moved at all. The same section there we tagged them, they, they were at. So on average, the fish are staying where we let them go at. So it's kind of interesting to see that as well. Out of the 195 fish that we have tagged, 53 of those have been caught and returned and only four have been kept. Three of those people said that they would not have kept them had it not been tagged. Only one person has legitimately kept it because he wanted to keep fish. The other ones just wanted the tag money and didn't know what to do with the tag. Forward.
And if we were having a lot of fish being kept and harvested, we might change the regulations to be more restrictive, you know, make more catch and release areas or a more strict length limits on the fish. But what we're seeing so far, there's not a lot of harvest. But ultimately, we wanted to know and address whether or not these fish were getting pulled out in the fast rates that we were hearing about, which we're just not seeing. 962. When we first started this, people were telling us, oh, my buddy caught the $5,000 tagged fish. And I'm like, well, that, we didn't take, put any in that were that high. $100 was the highest amount that we put in. So there was a lot of hype starting off where people were, thought they were going to come out and make thousands of dollars by catching a smallmouth bass. And that's just not the, not the case. It's not like the Hot Springs Challenge where, where folks are, are targeting, you know, $50,000 Big Al or whatever that's down there. This is just uh, for our information and there's a lot of low reward tags out there. You know, there's a chance of getting that higher dollar reward tag too, but just uh, give us the information when you go fishing and we don't want you to change the, your tactics at all. Just uh, let us know what you're doing when you do catch a fish. If you enjoy the natural state's great outdoors, hit the subscribe button and get updates about all of our latest videos.